folks, I want to take you through a tuning process, and this is going to be a little different than the practical PID tuning videos up till now. I'm going to show you my tuning flights and give you the thoughts that I'm having during the flights, but we're not going to go through the big in-depth tuning process. What's going on here is I've switched from the DYS 5x4x3 props to the King Kong 5x4x3 props, and I'm just figuring out how to modify my tune to accommodate that. The major things that I've had to do is raise the P-gain, because these props presumably make less thrust than the DYS. And I've also been able to uh, make my filtering less aggressive and raise my D, turn, my D gains way higher uh, because these props are much better balanced. So I've got the copter mostly flying where I want it to be, but this is just the last few uh, fl flights where I'm really just trying to lock in the tuning. So we're gonna watch the acro flights. We're gonna, I'm gonna give you my thoughts as we go through it and hopefully this will be educational. People are always asking, what kind of maneuvers do you do when you're tuning? And a lot of the time, you see me do my tuning and it's just back and forth in a field, making sharp turns and looking for prop wash. That's like getting to the 85, 90%, and this is what happens when I'm at 90, and I'm trying to get to 95 or even maybe closer to 100%. Let's take a look. The first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna do some sharp turns and feel whether the copter feels like it's going where I point it in the turns. Uh, this is checking to see that the P-gains are right. When the P-gains are too low, the copter will feel like it's sliding to the outside of the turn, and I'll have to sort of slow down and turn into the turn even harder. Uh, the P-gains here are pretty close to correct. Unfortunately, that's not something I can communicate to you by talking about it. You would just have to feel it. Right here... You see how there was almost no prop wash there during that sort of backward sliding move? That's a good sign. I'm doing some close-in things here to see again. How is the copter tracking and where I feel like I'm pointing it? And it is. Looking for prop wash there during that back sliding move. There was a little. Again, doing some sharp turns here. These moves where the copter is spinning and sliding are also good for bringing out prop wash. There's a little prop wash there. A little bit of rebound on those snap rolls there. Watch. Again, a little hard to see, but it's there. Here I try to fix it with the stick and try and do a little bit of a, a smoother stick movement to get that rebound away by, by, by controlling how I move the stick versus how I change the tune. I'm doing this move a couple times because when the P gains were too low, I was having a real hard time making that turn and lining up that approach to the trees with speed. And here it feels just right. A little prop wash there. And that's the end of the battery. Now there was a little more prop wash in that tune than I would prefer. It wasn't a lot of prop wash, but I really try and get the last little bit of prop wash out of my tunes. I like the way it looks, and I know that other people are closely scrutinizing my flights. I've been raising the P gains because when I switched from the DYS to the King Kong props, the P gains that were right for the DYS props were way too low for the King Kong props. The copter was flying really sloppy, and I said, screw it, I'm just raising the P gains through the roof, and if the copter doesn't sharpen up, then I know that something else was wrong. I raised the P gains, and the copter did sharpen up, but now maybe the P gains are higher than they really need to be, and they're causing extra oscillation. So I knock the P gains down by 10 points on pitch and roll. That's more than I would usually knock them down, but they're in like the range of 9 to 11, so they're already so high that taking off 10 points actually isn't that big of a chunk. And I'm also going to raise the D gains by 5 points each. That's a relatively small margin. It's probably not going to push my motors over into the overheating if they're fine now, but that may help with the prop wash handling just a little bit. Let's see how the changes took effect. Again, I'm going to try to bring the prop wash out doing moves like that. Looking pretty good here. Looking for prop wash right here. There's some prop wash. That's one of the hardest situations though, so we'll keep looking. I'm just having fun here. No prop wash came out during that move though. Those turning falls can bring it out.
little prop watch you could hear there, but not see. That feels good. No prop wash there. Again, doing these sort of turning, sliding moves where I'm facing a different direction than I'm going to try and bring the prop wash out. Little prop wash there. Again, that's one of the hardest places to, to fix it. Little prop wash there. So I think it's gotten better. It's not perfect, but it is better. There's less prop wash during these sort of normal moves and it's really only coming out during the most difficult and aggressive move. This is hard for me to do, this line here, if the uh, P-term isn't right. If the copter isn't tracking right, I just really don't feel confident doing that move. And I did feel confident there, so that's good. Line up that track just right. No real prop wash there. Now I'm gonna do some of these pylon turns and just feel how the copter is turning. The number one thing I think that affects the way the copter feels like when it turns is the yaw P gain. One of the biggest things I did to get the copter to, to turn uh, the way I wanted it to was raise the yaw P gain. It's a subtle thing, but when yaw P gain is too low, the copter just feels like it's sliding to the outside. Whereas here, I'm hitting these turns kind of how I want to hit them, and there's not much prop wash either. So the tune is getting better. What is it? What is that thing? What is it? So at this point, my thinking was that the copter's soft, slidey feeling had been the result of the P gain on yaw being too low, not pitch and roll. I had raised pitch and roll to a really high level to bring oscillations out. The copter had sharpened up some, but what really did it was bringing the yaw P gain up. So now I'm lowering the pitch and roll P gain to take the prop wash oscillations down. The copter's still feeling reasonably sharp, but I still have a little more oscillation than I want. What I decided to do was take the yaw P gain up another 10 points. Since that sharpened up the turns, the sort of slidey turns, let's do that a little more and take the pitch and roll P gain down by another five points. I don't want to soften it up too much, uh, but I think it could stand to come down just a little more and still fly well. I also raised the D gain another 10 points to try and tame the prop wash and, and handle some of that bounce back on the snap rolls that I was seeing. And I actually only raised roll D gain since I wasn't seeing the bounce back on, the, on flips. I, I, since I'm raising the D gain somewhat aggressively, I am going to keep monitoring the motors to see if the, they are getting hot and they're not. So as you watch this one, I hope you'll see that there is less prop wash here than in any of the others. And that's the main thing I'm going for. See, no prop wash there, during that slidey turn. No prop wash there. A nice smooth roll there. No prop wash there during that turn, that falling turn. None there. None there. None there. I'm just gonna keep saying that. I'm gonna I want you to notice the things where I'm looking for prop wash in case you're not accustomed to the kind of maneuvers that will bring it out. The ability to eliminate prop wash will probably be, see that snap, no ringing or bounce during that snap. The ability to eliminate prop wash will pro is what you have to do, that'll be the last 10 or 5% of your tune is getting rid of prop wash. So. <laughs> and see, I'm doing all these maneuvers where the copter is, there's a little bit, there was just a little bit there. Doing all these maneuvers where the copter is falling and turning and, uh, and, and no prop wash came out. So I feel like we've made some real improvements. We might could get it just a little better, but it's in pretty good shape here. That's going to do it for this video. I think if I had to sum up this video, I would say that this is 
a, a, a insight into what I feel like it takes to take a good tune into the realm of a great tune. At the beginning of the video, the copter is not flying bad, but there certainly are some things that if you had a critical eye, you could nitpick. And by the end, there are much fewer of those things, in my opinion. Oh, there will always be something you could nitpick, but the prop wash is, is much less prominent. It's almost non-existent, uh, and the copter is just flying exactly how it's being commanded to fly. I hope this has been helpful, educational. If you have any questions, definitely leave them in the comments. And as always, happy flying.